My name is Richard Carson, and I'm one of the supporters of the South African Film Festival that is screening across North America. It's a supporter of the Education Without Borders program, which, which assists at-risk learners in South Africa, as well as Indigenous um, programs in Canada here. I'd like to start first with a bit of a personal reflection. Uh, at age 50, I decided that I was going to take on the uh, whole challenge of running a standard marathon, which is 26 miles, 50 kilometers, or 42 kilometers. I'd done all the training, followed the diet, did everything else. I finished the run, and it was one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life. Um, the training before and the recovery afterwards was pretty enormous, but I felt like I'd really accomplished a goal. And then I met my wife, Wendy, and she told me about the Comrades Ultra Marathon, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe what was actually in the challenge with Comrades at 50 miles or 90 kilometers altogether. It's almost twice the distance of a regular marathon. And by comparison, my run has kind of paled in significance over the years. I had still have difficulty getting my mind wrapped around how incredibly grueling physically and mentally demanding this run actually is. I Today, I have the honor of speaking with four people who have all run the Comrades, won an unbelievable 21 times. And the others of you under tremendously challenging circumstances, you are properly described in the movie as the bravest, the toughest, and the most extraordinary human beings. And every finisher is a hero or heroine. Congratulations and welcome to Omesh, to Denise, Calls, and Kursi. Thank you for joining us to share your experiences. The first question I'd like to put to each of you is to ask why? What motivated you to take this on? So perhaps, uh, Denise, maybe we could start with you. Okay, for, for myself, it's, um, you know, Comrades is part of the whole South African sort of ethos. And I only started running at about the age of 30. And just as the goals proceeded or, or got better it went from a 5 to a 10 to a 21 to a 42 and eventually it became a comrades for me and it's yeah and then that's what I trained for. Great well thank you. Amesh. So, so for me I think you know if you've watched the comrades story it was obviously you know uh, uh, just specific to certain race groups that were only allowed to run um, initially. And I think when it opened up to other races, I think from 1975, um, my dad actually wanted to run it in 1976. And uh, he was encouraged by a friend uh, who was a member of the Savages Club at the time. And he got my dad to sign up and do all the training. But unfortunately, uh, in April of that year, he had to undergo a hernia op, and sadly, he didn't get to run his comrades. And the friend that actually encouraged him, they basically lost contact with him because he had, they had he had moved jobs. So, so yeah, just uh, you know, just to honor my dad, and he he's 84 now, and he still does his little trots around the uh, the community. So, yeah, that's that's my my reason, my purpose for running. Fantastic. So many personal reflections. Yeah. So calls, how about you? Wow. Okay. Um, basically, um, I was a very uh, good athletic uh, while uh, being in primary school in my, well, if you would say in America and in, in, in Canada, the elementary phase, the early stages of, of growing up. So uh, my latter stages where well, going into high school and stuff, I wasn't athletic. I became a bit of a naughty kid. I lost my mom uh, straight after I finished school. I went through severe depression. I um, I started uh, taking substances, and I ended up being in a in a hole where I, I I continuously never used to finish what I started, and my life went haywire. I started taking tremendous amount of alcohol, and I ended up taking drugs, uh, meaning uh, going on to heroin. 
So it went so deep that I actually started taking heroin. I ended up on the streets. I sold my whole entire life. I had um, lost my dignity. I um, I was discarded from society. And um, in 2017, I found myself and uh, I found my higher power. And what happened was there was a great change in my life. So uh, just two years ago, um, I remember my boss ran a particular race. And he ran the race and he said, hey, why don't you join the race? So my, my running club, actually, that now that I'm running for, actually um, had, they were hosting a race. So I, I, I ran for the, uh, the race and it felt so good. And I, when I finished, not realizing not much about times and stuff. So everyone was asking me what time I ran. And everyone to a shock, they said, you're natural because I finished uh, a 10K in 45 minutes. And they said, that's not normal for your first race. <laughs> so basically, I started building myself up from there. And then last year, I just ran two 242s and I qualified for my two oceans. I ran my the most beautiful race in the world in Cape Town. And realizing on the day that I finished my two oceans, with pain, sucker for punishment, um, I decided to... Uh, um to apply to enter in my comrades and um basically i finished what i started basically and that's my journey uh i i got to finish what i started yeah fantastic fantastic uh so carsey i mean you've got an incredible story to tell yeah so um my comrades uh, journey started um i got diagnosed with cancer um well, my wife, Michelle, was training for the comrades. I got diagnosed for cancer. She was going to um, stop training and um, look after me. I gave her the go-ahead to carry on. Um, and every morning waking up, at, she was still teaching at the time, waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning to, to while I'm sick, and we still, we still that time had two little kids, um, she had to wake up every morning early, like like all comrades runners, but just our situation was a bit different. Um, the dedication that you showed to train with me being extremely sick off work for you, I laid in bed and made the decision that if I'm healthy and alive, I will also put in that dedication and train for the comrades um, with Mish and we wanted to do it together once I was cleared. So a year after I was cleared and we started training together, which was the most wonderful time we've actually had was every morning, um, every weekend running together. And our goal was to do the comrades together, which we did, but we never finished together because <laughs> that year I had a bit of an affection, but I did the comrades and at 30K, <laughs> so I had a heart, at well, a small heart attack and I had to go to, to hospital so um didn't get to finish that um so the next year i had to push through again with mish carry on training and yeah i got over the line my oh. goodness geez the the stories that each of you have to tell it's it's <laughs> so incredible geez thank you um I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the training schedule and and rather than turning to all four of you, I understand you you all belong to the same running club, so perhaps one of you could take the, take the lead on that. I, I don't know, calls, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the training. Okay, uh, basically um I'm 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 just still a beginner, right? So I'm I, I was told that uh, and, and, uh, 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 and a comrades runner has to have at least 800 to 1,000, 1,200 kilometers on their legs before comrades. So basically, my training plan started in January, um, early January. So I started off with the weekly, started gradually to starting off with a, a three kilometer a day. Um, you feel what's best for you because some people like training in the evenings and afternoons. Uh, some people like early mornings. With me, it's like I, I had to adjust and I perhaps prefer training in the mornings because I get myself going in the mornings and I have my day going all, all, all the way after that and I feel good. So I start off in the morning with my 3K and then as I build up, I go on to a 5K and then to a 10K. And um, day after, you go on to your, your Saturdays and your Sunday, uh, Sunday morning long runs. 
basically you got your 21k you got your 30k and you go up to pay but basically 30k but basically it needs to be slow not to not on your normal pace of running on a normal race day you have to prevent yourself from getting injured and stuff and not forgetting also your strength training which i uh basically found out recently while training it's very vital to have strength training as well because also that also prevents you from having injuries and well and also it helps you with your endurance and your 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 basically your 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 your, your journey while running you know so basically that's my training plan at the at ease uh basically i, I was i was blessed with a, a personal trainer before uh, comrades a month before tra- comrades so um, it was a great journey with being uh, having a personal trainer as well because I learned how to do track work as well, which is important for your speed work, um, uh, stretching, which is also important. So there's a lot of, lot of things into running. It's not just simply getting up, putting your running shoes and getting onto the road. There's a lot of discipline and there's a lot of hard work into it and there's a lot of other things involved in it as well. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Brings back some memories for me, the shin splints, the tendonitis, a few other <laughs> odds and ends, as well as all the great memories. I, th- I think one of the things that I find the most is uh, the whole notion of running and how much time you spend inside your own head, you know, while you're, yeah. while you're out there. Yeah. Sure. So <laughs> the next question I wanted to ask, and I'll, I'll ask each of you in turn, is if you could just share with us one or two of your best, your worst, or your most humorous moments that you can think of related to, well, either the race or, or running in general. So Amesh, maybe I could start with you. Sure. I think uh, my best best moments on the road, obviously running and experiencing and taking in the race is just the amazing, uh, I think, supporters you have along the way. They just, yeah, it's it's just something else. They just carry you through. Um, yeah, I think that that's, that's the best moment. I can't think Are of anything you? else. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Thank you, thank you. And Denise, how about you? You've got you've got a thousand experiences to share. <laughs> <laughs> I would, for me, I would say um, the my twentieth comrades was my best. Um, I had run fourteen comrades, then I stopped running for ten years, and then my involvement with a, a, a charity um, and wanting to raise awareness and money for them brought me back in 2016. So I never really thought I would get to the 20, 20, uh, comrades mark. So that for me was the best one. And yes, you, I, I think for everybody, your first is just the most unforgettable, you know, that, that you can, that you've done it. And, um, my 10th was my best time in for all the 21. So those are a few of my best moments. And, and as far as fun moments, you know, your 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 training, the the sort of people that you get to meet along the way, your um the encouragement that you get, you know, that's that also helps to to build that um that memory of of your the comrade's life. Great, great. thank you. And <clears throat> Kersa, you've already uh, shared with us probably what I would think would be your worst moment of being taken off to the hospital with a minor heart attack, but perhaps you could tell us something something more, maybe a, a best moment, a humorous moment, or maybe there is a worst moment. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the, actually the worst um, moment wasn't that, just that the year after, um, you know, the comrades is the one thing on the day of of running it and finishing it, the build up to it, all the training as everyone here would know, like the commitment that you put in and on the day, anything can go wrong. Um, so yeah, that first comrades where I had my heart attack, I had to go to hospital and Michelle had to finish on her own where we wanted to finish together. And then the following year, when we started off again together at 86, 87 kilometers, we were about two Ks out, Michelle fainted. <laughs> And we didn't end up doing the comrades together again. So that's probably the the worst. But um, the 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 most fun was um, actually just training with her, and like even not talking, just being next to each other, training every morning, every weekend together. Was uh, I really loved that time together. But a real also a nice um, on a funny side. Everyone knows I like a good beer, 
Um, I got to Kloof on my comrades. I finished and I saw some friends there. And you're not supposed to, you're obviously supposed to be hydrated. And I saw them with a full beer and I was like, hey, give that to me. Let me down that, finish that. And I got <laughs> back to Durban. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's amazing. Jeez, yeah. Reminds me of uh, the story of Arthur and having a pipe. <laughs> <My group. laughs> okay. Calls, how about you? Wow. Oh, one of my best moments. You know, um, I remember um just before I went um on to doing the uh, the comrades, we were doing a root test in the beloved long run root tester. And it was a 52k root tester. And basically I I I I I um I got an ITB injury. So that was a quite nasty one for a few a month ahead of comrades trying to get yourself uh sorted out within that time period with an ITB, which takes about six to eight weeks to get uh properly uh, healed and stuff. So it was quite a um um uh, um uh and um what can I say? It was a good thing for me to see this bill for, for me to happen because uh, out of it I saw the love and the, the 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 compassion of the people around you. And while running comrades, I had like a, a few moments where I had to stop and like to sort out myself. I had uh, tape and I had bandages and stuff. And the amount of people that stopped by and asked if I'm okay and if I'm doing all right, and it was so amazing. And I'm not. Um, I'm a person of 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 growing up in a background of suffering with rejection and all sorts of stuff, which caused me to start taking heroin and stuff. So this big big change of stuff that came about was so phenomenal for me. Like, I mean, I, I suffered a lot of things, especially with racism and stuff. But to see people come together as one, as Ubuntu as one, as people as one, one nation as one in one corporation was so emotional for me. And especially in the beginning where we sing the national anthem together and we sing the Shoshaloza together, where we see everybody together as one in unity, as one generation, as one community, uh, in, in one accord, in one direction, having one goal, looking at one uh, finish line, all together as one, being together and having one achievement and one goal together was so amazing. And being together and having, not to say as 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 comrades, as brothers and sisters together, because we call this, I call this a family, because the people I meet, I meet now, I meet, um, and they always tell me every person that runs the comrades has a a story to tell, and my story to tell is that I love being part of this community is because of the people. They make this community. They make comrades, com uh, comrades, uh, marathon what it is today. So that is that is the most amazing thing for me. Um, it, it 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 you know I have this motto in my in my life where I say, um, the only time you look down on a person is when you're lifting them up, and this is what I see in comrades. They do not look down on anybody. It's always it's always about lifting each other up and uh, encouraging each other. So that's what I love about this community here. Thank you, thank you. That's. That's actually going well into the last question that I was going to ask. So I may not have, have to come back to you, Carl, to answer the last question. But yeah, it, it brings back a personal reflection again for me, just briefly. As I was completing the, I think it was the uh, last last two kilometers of, of my run, I'm racing over this bridge. And I, there's this crowd of people on each side that are cheering away. And I looked in front of me. I had a friend who, who joined me for the last 10 kilometers. I looked in front of me and I couldn't see anybody running. And I turned around and I looked behind me. I couldn't see anybody running. So I turned to my friend and I said, who are they cheering for? And, they, and he <laughs> said, you. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that just gives you such a feeling. Yeah. Oh. So um, the, the next question... Uh, Denise, I'd like to turn to you uh, as as somebody who's got a lot of the experience with it. Uh, this phenomenon of bus drivers, um, it's it's something that I learned from the film. It, it sounded like it started first with at least with the Comrades Ultra Marathon. But could you explain the role a bit more of the bus drivers and their importance to so many runners in this incredible race? I just think it's it's a lot of runners are running their first, a lot of can't sort of track the time. So the bus driver is a more experienced runner who knows how to get to the finish 
in a specific time. So, um, you know, they, they pace, they are good pacers and uh, they motivate, they're always motivating, they're chanting, they're singing and that all of that just drives the people, the buses just get bigger and bigger. You know, it's just to help um, and motivate people to get to that finish line. Yeah, I, I find that incredible, especially the 12 hour bus driver, the, the, the person that has to guide those people who are going to be close to the end and don't want to miss that finish line. That's it's, it's sorry. That is, I mean, they, those last buses can be 50, 100 people just, just in one bunch, just running together, you know, and just, just heading for that line at, for a certain time or, or, or for a finish. Right, right. Okay, well, this brings us to then to the to the last question, which I think, as I said a moment ago, calls. I think you've already uh, plunged into it in a long way. I find that in in many ways, the comrades is a reflection of the political trajectory of of South Africa, originally a white males only race, and with other races and women only included in the uh, um, mid seventies. Today, it has such a diversity of participants in it, all united in their camaraderie, enthusiasm, and commitment, both to the country and to just finishing the race. Um, it's almost become more of a utopian vision of what the Rainbow Nation really means and what it really could achieve in South Africa. I'm wondering, um, could I ask each of you to just quickly reflect on what you think the comrades means to you in terms of the unity, the camaraderie, and pride in your country. So, Corsi, I'm going to turn to you first. Yes. So, uh, um, yeah, geez, it's just uh, this race is for it's for all shapes and sizes, for all colors, for all. Um, uh, what's the word? walks of life um and i think also this like when you run it just shows you we're all human we're all in the same boat nothing's going to help you um to cross over that finish line only thing that will help you is everyone that's supporting you of all races of all shapes of all sizes of all walks of life um yeah and i think we're so far past it if you look at the the comrades all that is all in my mind when i run and i see guys laughing of all races and all encouraging us, it's 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 so past us, and that's the great thing that I experienced during that race. Thank you, thank you, Amish. Well, for me, I think I think you know when we all stand at the start line, we're all equals. I mean, we've all been mm. on that months of training. We've all made the sacrifices, and you know we we just all pumped. Uh, but we're all there for the same you know same purpose. Uh, it just reminds us that you know, uh, the, to the the potential of togetherness. Uh, and I think this race shows that, you know, uh, individuals, they set aside their differences and we and we all come together, uh, you know, with a common goal. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just to achieve something extraordinary. Um, it's runners, like, of course, he says, all backgrounds, nationalities, all walks of life. We just come together and we all are facing the same challenge. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> It's just going together in unison, heading down the same journey, start to finish, highs and lows. That's, you know, that's race day. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. Denise. Yes, I think everybody, you know, everybody has said everything. But for me, I just want to add that it's not just the runners. It's, you know, that we all equal the, it's, it's, it's the supporters, you know, they're also coming from Absolutely. from everywhere, you know, I mean, if it wasn't for those supporters, I don't think a lot of us would get through comrades, you know, so, and the, the supporters are everybody, they're from the tiniest little child from a rural area to the, to, from every sort of areas that we go through, they all are there, just lining that road, so, I mean, that, that makes a, a huge support group as part of the whole comrades ethos. Yes, yes. I, in, I was quite impressed with that one portion of the movie where they showed the uh, disabled children sitting the by the, the roadside yes. and how much yes. they influenced. 
That's that's such an incredible part of the comrades. Yeah. So I think Carl's, it humbles you, Richard. This, yeah, the race humbles you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I I can I can totally understand that, but it's it's such a triumph too, as as well. They both as you as you said, Amesh, they both the start and the finish. So, Carl's, I'm going to come back to you. You you spoke so <laughs> eloquently earlier, but I, I'd like to to ask you to to speak again. Okay. You know, um, one of the things um, I've heard some time back, they said the greatest threat, a threat to an iron is its own rust. And the greatest threat to a human being is his own mindset. And one thing I can tell you is Comrades has changed my mindset immensely. Uh, meaning that, you know, um, um, if you look at the amount of people from around the world that come and and, and, and participate in this Comrades Marathon, and if you look at the amount of, of people around, like, uh, of course, you said, different backgrounds, different experiences. If you look at uh, our our last year's winner, he, he was simply a security guard. And people that come from different backgrounds and circumstances of, of life, it, 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 I mean, title that has no meaning to, to you and running on the road. It's just you and the, and, and, and the tar, between you and the tar. And the most amazing part about it is that the people that's there cheering for you, being behind you, people that are there um, saying that you can do it, that you're just um, a few kilometers away. And, and and that actually builds your mind up. I mean, I know each and every one of us here at the 60, after the 60 kilometer mark, it's not against you and your, your physical being, but it's also you and your mindset after that, because your mindset actually really changes. But it's about the people that are around you that actually really, really keep you going and keeps that heartbeat, uh, that, that, that keeps your heart going, you know, and um, keeping you motivated. And that's what I love about it, and and it really, really motivated me to see people dancing and 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 and, and different uh, communities coming about and and cheering you about, and also like we had our names on our on ourselves, and people saying your name, and you get a shock. Whoa, how do you know my name? And you realize your name is on your tag. But that's how much <laughs> extent people go to actually cheer you on, to even say your name, and it feels so good. You feel confident, and you actually realize that you actually really find your identity. Wide while you're running you find yourself you find who you are you find uh, your true your true your true self uh, the innermost being of yourself and that's the most amazing part about it i mean you can go through the most crappiest day but if you go for a run you come back home smiling again you know and that's what running is about it's it's about motivating ourselves it's about keeping us going in our in life and life's journey as well and also meeting new people every single day and making a difference, not in our in our own lives, and then also in other people's lives as well. So that's such an amazing part about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much for for this and for taking time out of your incredibly busy lives. We just appreciate so much uh, you you taking the time to share this with us today and to talk once again about this just incredible, incredible race. Um, it's you've added so much to the movie here that by by what you've what you've contributed. Thank you. Um.